Okay, we have just been learning about partial fractions in normal maths, so it's a skill that can now just be used in method of differences. And the reason partial fractions is going to be really good is because you will hopefully be splitting one thing up into two things with a subtraction sign. If you do partial fractions and there's no subtraction, method of differences is not going to work because it's called method of differences, not method of addition, okay? So what we're going to do here is we will try and split it into partial fractions in the hope that we get the form of r, f of r minus f of r plus 1, or we said f of n minus f of, um, f of n plus 1, or something similar. Because in the previous one we did, we had f of r plus 1 minus f of r, and it just did a slightly different kind of cancelling that we had. So we just hope that we get that kind of pattern that we've got here. This time I'm going to try doing it the function notation first, and then I'm going to try the manual method afterwards so that you can see the, the parity between them. Okay, I have, to begin with, 1 over 4r squared minus 1. I want to split it into partial fractions. So 1 over 4r squared minus 1. What can I do to the denominator? Good. So I have 2r minus 1, 2r plus 1. So it's going to be an a over 2r minus 1 plus a b over 2r plus 1. So 1 equals a, 2r plus 1, plus b... 2r minus 1. I, I'll probably just do substitution. Seems like a sensible one to do. So I'll start off by saying that r is equal to negative a half. So 1 equals minus 2b. So b is minus a half. And the other value I'll substitute in is that r is equal to a half, so that I get 1 equals 2a. So a is equal to a half. Which means that the sum from r equals 1 to n of 1 over 4r squared minus 1 is... The sum from r equals 1 to n of a is a half, so I'm just going to write it as a half over 2r minus 1. And then it's not a plus, is it? It's minus a half over 2r plus 1, like that. You could have put the half down into the denominator. I left it at the top because what do you think I might do instead with it? I'm going to take the half and I'm going to pull it out right to the front, okay? I don't, you don't have to do that. You could, if you wanted to, leave the 2 in the denominator. But I'm just going to leave it like this. The trouble with this is that we may not remember to do a half at the end. Okay, I'm going to try and see if we can spot what the function is. So we know we normally want it in the form like this. So does it seem to be in that form that we've got there? Does this, if this is f of r or f of n, is this one f of r plus 1? No, it's... No, I think it is. So if we're saying here that f of r is 1 over 2r minus 1, if I do the f of r plus 1, I'll be replacing r with r plus 1, which is 1 over 2r plus 2 minus 1, which is 1 over 2r plus 1. So it is in the form the traditional form of f of r minus f of r plus 1. It doesn't look as obvious because there's a gap of 2, but the gap of 2 is counted by the 2, the factor of 2 as well. So it is in that traditional form that we've got there. So we know that for that traditional form, when we have something in this form of f of r, or f of r, f of n, they're kind of interchangeable. We know that if we did that form we would end up with 
f of 1 minus f of 2, f of 2 minus f of 3, f of 3 minus f of 4, etc. And then on the nth one, you would get f of n minus f of n plus 1. And this is the one where these cancel. But we've already got this kind of shown to us. So we know it's going to just be f of 1 minus f of n plus 1. I'm going to do it the, the long way. I'm going to do it the manual way afterwards as well, okay? So our one that we've got, which is up top here, we know, oh, that's why I didn't do that. We know that a half, the sum from r equals 1 to n of 1 over 2r minus 1 minus 1 over 2r plus 1 is just going to be equal to a half this thing f of 1 minus f of n plus 1. And so f of 1 is just substituting 1 into this thing, which is what's f of 1 from here? 1. one. And then f of n plus 1 is going to be, well, we did r plus 1, so it's going to be the same as this one, but just with an n, isn't it? So it's going to be minus 1 over 2n plus 1. So it's just a half of 2n plus 1 minus 1 over 2n plus 1. Am I going too fast? So the numerator is just 2n. And when I half it, I would just get n over 2n plus 1. So I wouldn't do the function notation to answer this question. I wouldn't do that. I'm using this as an opportunity to teach you more about the function notation in case we get a rock solid hard exam question. Because you'll see why when later in the booklet, I think I've got one that I've called a particularly weird example. I think I've called it an, an example in an atypical form. This function notation will help. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do it the way that I would recommend on actually answering this question. And I'll sort of squeeze it on the same page as well. So let's just quickly recap what we did here. When we wrote it in partial fractions, we recognized it is actually in that correct form. And the function of the first one is this. And we checked to see if it was true for the second one. We then knew from that function notation it would collapse down to this. So we just used that to substitute in. Now we're going to do it with numbers and see what happens. So we're actually working out a half the sum from r equals 1 to n of 1 over 2r minus 1 minus 1 over 2r plus 1. And I'm going to start off by substituting in 1. There's going to be a half outside all of this stuff, OK? So I'm going to start off with the half here. So when I substitute in r equals 1, I would get 1 over 1 minus 1 over 3. Then when I do r equals 2, I would have 1 over 3. No, I'm going to leave the half at the beginning, and then I'm going to do big brackets for the whole thing, OK? I'm just going to factorize that half outside the front just for the whole thing. I think it's just going to be a bit easier to do that. And then what would I get next? 1 over 5. And so what do you think the next one is? 1 over 5, yeah. And then 1 over 7. OK, and then I'm not going to do all of them. I'm going to do plus dot, dot, dot. I'm not even going to do the penultimate one. I can do the penultimate one, but I know it's not going to be needed. So it'll be 1 over 2n minus 1 minus 1 over 2n plus 1. The, this will cancel with this, this will cancel with this, this will cancel with this, this will cancel with whatever was in front of it. So I get left with 
a half 1 minus 1 over 2n plus 1, which is exactly the same as what we've got over here, so it will simplify to n over 2n plus 1. The left side, I did say, the left side is better. I'm telling you, the left side is better. The right side is just spotting what happened. The left side is way easier to understand. I'm, I'm only, I would never, ever have shown you this right-hand side, ever, unless they'd done this crazy exam question where you still could do it using the left-hand side technique, but it's just harder to do. And if you look in Solution Bank, they love using this function notation. And I want you to become like the best mathematicians you can. And part of that is pushing your brain to kind of see things in different kinds of ways. It is exactly the same thing. We're literally just saying, well, all these functions are cancelling out. And we've just come up with the exact same line that we had here. This whole box is identical to this box that we've got here. The same thing. But I just want that there as like a backup. If you, if you just only know how to do this method, you will be 90% fine. There's a chance that it might be useful to use this other method. It might save you some time. It might help you to understand functions more deeply as well. So I'm going to ask for you to have a go at the next question, which is a partial fractions one here. And first of all, you express it in partial fractions, and then you're going to find out what it is for this. Now, be really careful, because first of all, you're going to be finding out this. Can I just quickly draw your attention? You're going to be finding partial fractions of this, but then you're going to be doing series to this. Can you spot any differences? It's it's OK, so this is a 2, this one is a 3. So just make sure that you're going to be countering that later on. I know. And I'm going to stop it here, but I'm going to put the mark scheme up for anyone. Oh, it's not even going to be that obvious. I guess it's just for the partial fractions and kind of it. What? <laughs> 